today we are here with Kimberly. Kimberly, uh, what city are we in? Stanton. Stanton. Mm -hmm. And are you originally from Stanton? No. No. Where are you from? La Mirada. La Mirada. And how did you end up here in Stanton? Uh, by the grace of God, I should say. Uh, housing. Housing. Mm -hmm. What's your current living situation? Mm, they would consider me homeless right now. But uh, actually, I have a roof over my head. I've been blessed. I was at the Tahiti right here, but I was transferred to Stanton Inn on Catella. But I have a roof over my head. Thank, thank you. When you say transferred, is somebody paying for that room for you? Yeah, I, I believe it's it's called American Family Housing. Right. Yeah. And how long have they been providing it's been housing? Over a year. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. And how long is that gonna continue? Oh, up until September first. August 31st, September 1st is when they're saying that it's going to end and hopefully you have housing and um, if you don't, I, I'm not sure what's going to happen after that. Right. We have, we, nobody knows, nobody says anything. And right. So that's awesome that they uh, give you housing. Do they by any chance provide you with money or do you? No money. No, no I have uh, social security. So, um, and then food stamps, I have, you know, partial, um, that's, that's it, you know. How old are you? Don't ask a woman her age. <laughs> I'm a woman of age. Okay. I'm in my 50s. How about that? Well, I gotta keep great. a little bit of pride. Yeah. <laughs> do you have kids? I do. Three adult children. And how are they doing? Well, I, I would. They're healthy. They're alive. You know. Of course, they don't like the situation their mom is in. They're doing much better than I am. Three, two of them. One and the other one's not. You know. That's why I'm out here, actually right here, looking for the other one, so. As far as jobs, have you ever worked a nine to five job? Oh yes, most definitely. That's why I'm able to collect social security. Oh. What kind of jobs have you had? I actually owned a business I was uh, catering, and I've always, since I was 15, 16 years old, I've always worked in, you know, a job. In food service, I love food service, so catering was always my big thing, and I had a catering business for 10 years, just catering. I specialized in East Indian food, and... What kind of food? East Indian. East Indian. You know, the kind with the duck, mm -hmm. not the feathers. Right. What was your most popular dish? Ah, uh, well, not mine so, so much, but uh, I love paneer. Are drugs a part of your life? I'm sorry? Are drugs a part of your life? I'm sorry? Are drugs a part of your life? Drugs? Drugs. D-R-U-G-S? Yes. No, uh, well, no, not, not at all. Um, I like marijuana, but that's, no, I've never participated in any kind of, like, anything you smoke, thrown up your nose, or in your, no, no never, ever, ever, yeah. um, never in my life, no. Uh, alcohol has been my demon. And that, that's it. I, I was sober for a long time, AA meetings, rehab, all that kind of stuff. But when my husband passed away a while ago, I did fall hard. N never drugs. Never drugs. I don't ever want to be a drug addict. But marijuana is something that I, I do love and not love, but, you know, yeah. if I can smoke, I would rather smoke that than a cigarette. Yes. And I'm sure it's very dangerous out here. Very um, much. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. Anything dangerous happen to you? Every day. And, and not, you know, well, you know, there's a lot of people, men, a lot of people, you know, that want to do drugs and a lot of men that want to, you know, yeah. It's bad. It's not good for a woman or a female, period, to be out here. And I, I know that it's for males, too. It's There's not a, you know, either way, if you want to do drugs, it's, you know, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, put it that way. And on this strip, but right now that I'm on Catello over there, and, and I don't mean, put, don't put that on the, on the police, but over there, it's a totally different world. Totally, uh, Catella and Western. It's beautiful over here, but this is like considered the drug. This is uh, hookers, drug dealers, right here. Up in the ball and all right here is bad. Bad, 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 bad. I mean, this is what they assume out of you. Assume that you're, you know, that that's what you're doing. 
Just oh, and like I said, I was looking for my son, uh, who who is a partaker of not good stuff, but he is my baby, and um, you know. Yeah. Do the he's cops give you guys a hard time out here? No, never me, because um, you know I don't do that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm sure they do them. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I stay clear of any kind of bad stuff, so, you know. And I, I don't, I only come around here like maybe once a week on a Sunday, you know. I, I've taken my time out of going to church and stuff like that. And When the program ends in September 1st, do you have any plans beyond that? Because it's going to be here right around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, I hope to God and I pray to God that, you know, that they, they have something planned, but, you know, I leave it all up to God, I really do, you know, I can't think past my nose right now, I really can, you know. What was your situation before you were in the hotel? Uh, well, you know what, I had a family, I had a home, I had all this stuff, kind of stuff. I was married, I was, I was what I would consider like a normal, probably like you guys, I don't know, I mean, I was living out of a car, I had a home, uh, my children went to school. You know, I had a, I drove a, a Tars wagon. I had a van. My family had jobs, and then all of a sudden, it just after my husband passed, just just like that in a matter of just a couple years. You know what I mean? I became an alcoholic, and everything just and and God spoke to me, and He told me, you know, this is just it. You know, nothing matters. All this does not matter. And believe I have to trust in him, and and, try, and I do with my whole heart that that there's something better around the corner. I know it. I have to trust in him that all this stuff, like he said, you know, every day, what does it matter what I wear? What does it matter? What I eat? Do you know, just rely on him for, you know, I don't have to have a refrigerator full of food. After being homeless for the last couple years, what's the most important lesson that you've learned? To rely on God. That's it. And nothing else matters, seriously. You know? I'm serious. I could rest my head on the ground right now and feel the same as I feel in a room. I mean, it's, it is nice to, to flip on the TV, you guys, seriously. But to know that I could rest my head and um, not feel threatened by somebody sometimes, you know what I mean? Because sometimes I can feel threatened over here in a room. Well, I'm glad where you're at, you feel safe. And I'm glad, it sounds I like do. a good I environment. I do, but I, I could feel safe, you know, sometimes somewhere else, you know what I mean? You know, on the streets, by myself. It's, it's, it's one of these, you know what I mean? Right. It's a tough situation. It really is. And I understand people who are on the streets. I really do. I, I, I understand drug addicts. I understand hookers. I understand all of them. I understand where they come from. I, all they need is a little bit of love and, and God. Mm -hmm. He'll help them. Uh, thank you so much for talking with us, Kimberly. Do you by chance have any social media that we can post in case somebody wants to reach out to you or possibly? Well, I just have my email. Okay. So, um, if you'd like, we can get that information and post sure. it. Sure. Okay. All righty. And um, lastly, are you okay with us using this on our YouTube channel? Sure. Awesome. I mean, if it's useful, please. You it know, will. I mean. Okay. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, guys.